Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are going through the entire book of Revelation on YouTube, on YouTube. And we are now in Revelation chapter 12. And of course, you can pick up right here and follow along with us, or you can go back and start from the beginning. It's up to you. Do a search in the YouTube bar and maybe find a passage or a chapter that you want to learn more about. We've been covering a lot of these uh, symbols and strange language, trying to make Revelation a little bit more understandable. And I think when some of us think about Revelation, we think about the devil, right? And we think about the verses that talk about the, the red dragon and the woman and, and what takes place there. That's where we're headed right now. And so maybe if you've wanted to learn a little bit more about the devil and uh, uh, those passages were a little confusing to you, we'll do our best to kind of sift through it and make it understandable. Revelation chapter 12. Remember, John is talking about his vision. This is his vision. This is what he sees. He says, And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. All right, so we have more symbols. Remember, anytime John says that he's, uh, that a sign appeared, he's talking about symbolism. He's talking about things that represent things, okay? So this woman is a symbol for Israel because she has 12 stars, right? And so that would be the 12 tribes of Israel. We see a little bit of that um, in Joseph's dreams and in talking about Israel in, in the Old Testament. And we know that Israel gives birth to the Messiah, right? So that would be the child, and uh, that, of course, is Jesus. Verse 3 says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven horns and ten heads, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Well, the dragon, of course, is Satan, and he wants to devour the child, kill Jesus, right? destroy Jesus the moment he's born. And we see that in the Christmas story. Why seven heads, though? Well, it probably uh, has something to do with seven different world empires, seven different great empires. And this last one, the ten horns, the last great empire is said to be led by uh, ten kingdoms. And so this would be the last uh, reign. This would be the Antichrist. So, and, and Satan's always at war with Jesus. And because of that, he's always at war with us. He's always at war with God's creation. So Satan will continue to attack us, continue to attack the world. Is Satan going to win? Of course not. And he knows he won't win, but it doesn't matter. You can say, well, why, why doesn't it matter? Maybe he, just, he should just give up. Well, even if you uh, were fighting in a war and you knew you were going to lose, you wouldn't give up, right? You'd continue to fight. You'd go down until your last ounce of, uh, of strength and breath. So he's going to go down fighting. And, and the dragon has always wanted to destroy the child. The moment he, uh, Jesus was born, right? We see in the Christmas story, what, is, what does Herod try to do? He tries to kill all the newborn babies. And, and you think, man, that's such an evil thing. And we, we try to make Herod out to be this you know, wicked, evil person. And he was. He totally was. But where would someone even get an idea like that? Or, or the nerve to carry it out? This is totally an act of the devil to attack Jesus, attack the Messiah when he's at his weakest. And Herod, uh, of course, didn't succeed. The devil doesn't succeed in his plots. But yet, the devil tries to attack us too right? Absolutely. The devil will continue to chip away at our morality and our goodness and our values. He will do everything he can to snare people in this world, to turn them, to get people to think, oh, you know, that's, a, that's an old sin. That's, that's how Christians used to believe. But, you know, that's not really a sin anymore. That's not really bad anymore. Just evolve. Become like one of us, right? And so whether it's a an attack that we see physically and in our world, or it could be a spiritual attack where 
Satan goes after our values and goes after some of the key uh, faiths of Christianity. Uh, Satan's going to do everything he can. He's, he's a wild dog that just lashes out in, in any way he can. You know, he, I don't think he has a, a, a well thought out plan. I don't think he has a strategy. I think he's going to, he's, he's random. He's chaos. He's going to do anything he can to bring you down. If he can't do it over here, then he'll just change gears and, and do it over there. And I think the, the world might say that it's evolving or growing or maturing or we're all becoming more woke, whatever that means. But, um, you know, right? You know, the world's not getting better. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. And that's why we read the book of Revelation. We read the end of the story. Now, we, we don't read it to spoil the ending. We don't read it to spoil the surprise. We read it for encouragement. We read it for encouragement because we see that the devil loses. You know, we have all these questions about the devil or these questions about Satan because he worries us. But the reality is, the only thing you need to know about him is he loses. <laughs> he loses. Our God wins. Our God reigns. Our God is king. And he protects us. And there's nothing that we need to fear. There's nothing that we need to fear. There's a great verse that I've been reading in church uh, lately. And it's uh, 1 John 4.4. 4. It says, You dear children are far from God and over, have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than than the one who is in the world. Well, who's the one that's in the world? The devil. And who's the one that is in you? The Holy Spirit, God, right? So you have everything. You have everything you need to face the temptations and the trials of this world and anything the devil might throw at you. And I, you will be victorious. You will be victorious because greater is he who lives in you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.